morning and welcome. It is good to, uh, number one, just be out of the house uh, for a few hours after uh, being snowed in for the last several days. want to welcome you here, of course, to Moulton First United Methodist Church. Whether you're here in person, joining us online, or listening to us on the radio, we're glad you're part of our service today. Uh, again, just a reminder and a thanks to everyone who's been doing so well with uh, making sure that you're wearing masks and social distancing uh, during this time of COVID. Uh, it's uh, really made a difference in, in helping keep one another uh, healthy and, and keep things from, from spreading here. Uh, unfortunately, we do uh, report that, of course, Ben is in the hospital this week. Uh, he has not been uh, feeling too well um, because of that. Uh, Margaret will probably be out of the office uh, for another few days this week. Uh, but if you need anything from the office, of course, you can email Margaret at office at moultonfirstumc.org uh, or uh, call or, or text me. Uh, again, thank you for your continued support of your, your gifts and your tithes, your offerings here at the church. I mentioned in the email that got sent out last week, we are changing our online giving provider. It should not be very complicated for those of you who are using online giving. Uh, it actually will be a little bit easier. It will be more cost-effective for us as well as uh, easier for us to manage. And that will begin to go in effect uh, starting this week. So if you're interested in uh, continuing with online giving, you'll get notified. If you're interested in starting out, uh, you can, uh, again, contact Margaret uh, by emailing her here at the church, uh, and then there will be some information that will come out in our newsletter. A uh, reminder as well, now that we have started the season of Lent and preparing for Easter, we have uh, Lenten devotions that you can find here on the altar rails. If you didn't pick one up last week, you can do that uh, following worship today. Uh, we will have uh, children's church. Uh, we'll, they'll dismiss after our second hymn. So as we begin worship this morning, uh, let us begin uh, with centering ourselves, opening our hearts and spirits with prayer this morning. Let us pray. God, prepare our hearts and spirits this morning, not just to hear your words for us today, so that, but so that we may be ever ready to journey into the wilderness places that you call us. Help us to remember that Christ is with us every step of the way, that we are not alone to remember that Christ will help lift our hearts and spirits and direct our paths. Enable us and open our hearts, loving God, to take this journey of, new, of faith, of new life with you. Open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to your movement this morning and to your spirit. Be with us and bless us in Christ's name. Amen. This morning, our opening hymn is hymn number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness, hymn number 140. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together uh, all three verses of Great is Thy Faithfulness, hymn 140. <laughs>
will remain standing for our affirmation of faith, which can be found in your hymnals on page 881. Let us join together with this historic affirmation. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. I believe in you say touch the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated and invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 395, 395 as we sing, take time to be holy. We'll sing the first, third, and fourth verse, one, three, and four of hymn number 395. sharing a time of our prayer concerns as well as our joys and our celebrations. I remind you uh, that our prayer list comes out each week in our email newsletter. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to that, you can do that by going to our Facebook page or our website or by emailing Margaret. Uh, please take a look and pray for those names that have been lifted up. As I mentioned, we do uh, want to continue to be in prayer for Ben, uh, as well as Margaret and Mariana uh, during this time. Uh, be with them as Ben continues in the hospital, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get started back with his treatment uh, very, uh, very soon. Uh, be in prayer again uh, for their all their healing at this time. 
Uh, of course, be in prayer for uh, those that are affected by the storms in Texas, uh, for the ice and, and outages there in Texas that was uh, part of the extra challenge Ben uh, faced uh, last week as well. We want to be in prayer again for those who are, uh, have experienced a, a, an extremely uh, unusual time. Are there other prayers or praises we'd like to lift this morning? Yeah, Lyle. Uh, unnamed, got several unnamed, uh, also the Carroll family. The Carroll family? Do y'all have, no, have any updates on uh, Chuck Canterbury? Thank you. So, yeah, continue to pray uh, for Chuck, uh, Chuck Canterbury uh, and family and, of course, the people at Liberty uh, United Methodist Church. Are there other prayers or praises this morning? Let us pray. Loving Creator God, we are reminded that you are in covenant with your people. You have pledged to be our God and, and asked us to be your people, trusting in you in all of our ways. But God, we find excuses to prevent us from really trusting in you. We put up barriers before our faith journey even begins. God, help us to tear down this barrier. Make us ready for the journey by replacing fear in our hearts with a sense of joy and challenge of self-discovery and discipleship. Remind us that in service to you and helping others, we'll also find ourselves made fully whole. Loving God, as we have spoken the names of our friends, of family members and other situations in which healing and comfort are needed. Let us remember that we too stand in need of prayer and healing. Make us ready to receive your good news and then be witnesses of your love to all people. Loving God, as we have lifted before you our joys and concerns, so lift our spirits to remember that you are always with us, offering your healing touch and your compassionate care. Help us to place our trust in you so that we might be led and guided by the one who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our kids are invited to go with Miss Kay to Children's Church this morning.
We'll begin with our scripture reading this morning. I invite you to turn in your hymnals uh, to page 757 as we read responsively Psalm 25. Uh, again, in your hymnals on page 757, 757. Let us read and hear our scripture responsively this morning. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Let none that wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are clothed in treachery. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, Therefore the Lord instructs sinners in the way and leads the humble in what is right and teaches them their way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep the Lord's covenant and testimonies. Our scripture this morning comes, the gospel text comes from the gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Mark 1, 9 through 15. Mark writes, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the river Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gift of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As I've mentioned, this week we begin our 40-day journey toward Easter, the season of Lent. And as uh, our focus for, the, for Lent this year, I've uh, looked at the idea of rehab. Now, we know that the idea of rehab, the word rehab, has several different meanings. It can be the therapy done after a surgery or uh, an injury. It can be what's done to detox from an addiction or that personal work done to overcome an addiction. It can be something that we do to a home to make it livable. And rehab can also be the emotional work that we do to overcome grief or crisis or loss. But in all those things with rehab, whatever kind of rehab we're doing, all those things have in common. The thing that all those things have in common is that in order to do rehab or take part in rehab, we have to start somewhere. But so many times, whether it's with personal work, with recovering from injury, or the delayed maintenance that we do, that we don't do on our homes, so often we don't take that first step. We don't take that first step into rehab because that first step leads us into a wilderness, a wilderness of uncertainty, of unpredictability, sometimes, again, with rehabbing a house, sometimes outrageous budgets that we have to deal with. 
rehab and that that time of going through rehab, that journey in the wilderness is filled with uncertainty and with anxiety. But if we want to find healing, if we want to improve our lives or living situation, we have to take that first step. If you're familiar with 12-step programs, you know that the first step in recovery, the first step in rehab, is admitting we have a problem. Now, for people who have never been in recovery, I've, I've heard people kind of put that down and think, you know, admitting you have a problem, that's not really that big of a deal. We hear it sometimes where we hear somebody say that sometimes, that they have a problem and they think, we think that they're just saying that to make us feel better. But for those people who are truly seeking real healing and wholeness, the first step of admitting that we have a problem is groundbreaking. And it lays the foundation for beginning that steps, the steps of recovery. Because let's face it, we're not good at admitting we have problems, are we? We're hard-pressed to admit that we could possibly make a mistake, that we could somehow be wrong in what we believed or how we lived our lives. The thing is, we spend most of our lives denying reality, denying the truth around us, even when the truth is right in front of us, and we don't take those steps, and we don't take that first step to admit that we have a problem. What keeps us from admitting that and saying that we have a problem, of course, is fear, fear of admitting that we do have a problem. Fear that keeps us from changing. Fear that keeps us from admitting that we need to change our minds. Now, fear comes in all shapes and sizes, from, from great avalanches to, to tiny little spiders. Fear of giving up control or the fear of admitting that we were never in control. And most of the time, we fear that pain that comes from changing. Last week, I shared about the the rehab that I needed to do to get my knee better in order to, uh, to not just play football again, but to be able to walk. Some of you know how difficult rehab is after heart surgery, especially when it comes to, to giving up uh, those foods that you liked or taking on more exercise. Rehab for addiction is scary, especially the, 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 the pain that the body and mind goes through through detoxing. But in all of those cases, the pain of rehab is so much less than the pain of not doing something. Again, admitting that we have a problem is the first step out of fear. It's the first step into the wilderness, but it's also the first step out of the wilderness. Because it helps us get back on moving on that path toward God, toward God and rehabilitating our relationship with God and with others. If we can't admit that we have a problem, if we are disconnected, if we are disconnected from God, if, if our relationships are out of whack, then there's no way we can get them back in sync. We're forever going to be stuck in a place that's even worse than the wilderness. We hear in the scripture today that Jesus goes into the wilderness after he's baptized. He goes into the wilderness to be reminded of who and what he should rely on. In the other Gospels, they they expand the story quite a bit, and we hear Jesus being tempted by the devil to do things, to give in to his base desires. The devil tempts him with security, with, with, with power. 
But Jesus doesn't give in. He knows who he needs to rely on. He knows that his path toward greatness is much longer and is much more strenuous. Jesus knew that that his kingdom was worth more than temporary distractions. Jesus knew that that fear and discomfort didn't outweigh, shouldn't outweigh the victory that would come later. The thing is, though, we try to arm ourselves against fear with so many things that don't help us at all. We shield ourselves with distractions of stuff. We, we embrace unhealthy relationships. We go from satisfying one craving to the next, but they don't help us. And we get further off the path of our journey towards discipleship, our journey of growing closer to God. We do it because we are afraid. We're afraid to change. We're afraid to admit that God does need to help us. That's why we begin every Lent, Lent every year, with this call to repent. Because to repent means that we have a problem. It means that we have been slaves to fear. To repent means that we have hurt God, that we have hurt others. Repent of our sins means that we, have, we no longer want to deny God's good work in us. In seminary, I served for a couple of semesters at a drug rehab clinic in Atlanta. And in that year, I met dozens, of, if, not, uh, if not 50 to 100 different men who had become professionals professionals at at crafting stories that denied that they ever had a problem. They had spent decades crafting a story that all of their problems, if they had a problem, was the result of something or someone else. But every now and then, I got to see some of those men begin to admit and realize that maybe the problem was not someone else but themselves. It was amazing to see them, once they began to admit that they had a problem, to see that transformation begin to take place in their lives as they began their steps towards recovery. Their wilderness wasn't over. They were just beginning the the recovery process, but that wilderness that they were in was going to be a much easier wilderness because now their eyes were open. By repenting, by admitting we have a problem, we increase our chances for God to work in us and work on us to help us become better. That's not what the world tells us, is it? With the internet, we we have this this constant opportunity to, to reinforce our confirmation bias. With so many other things, we we gobble them up to, to justify our ignorance. We embrace things that that pit us against one another, things that tell us that I'm not the one who needs the change, but it's you. The thing is, that couldn't be further from the nature of God. Because if we look at Scripture, if we look at the, the history of humanity, God is all about change. God's primary goal for us in the scope of Scripture and the work of the Spirit, God's primary goal for us is rehabilitation. If there's one constant about God is that the closer we get to God, the more we will change. Really, that's the biggest thing that we need to repent of, that that things can't change or the things shouldn't change, that we should remain the same. It's the slave's mentality, the the addict's mentality. It's the mentality of someone who has embraced the world's values and not Christ. 
The Bible is a story of God constantly changing and rehabilitating us and the world. Yeah, it can be painful to change. The thing is, it's a whole lot more painful not to change. As we begin the season of Lent, I, I want to invite you once again to, to examine your lives, examine your heart, examine your spirit, to see if we need to admit that we have a problem. What problems have we grown complacent with? Things we can't think, that we think can't be changed. What attitudes cause us to resist growth, both spiritually and emotionally? What habits do we have that choke the life out of our life and out of others? We have in these scriptures a story of rehabilitation a story of reconciliation, a story of growing closer to God. We have this offered to us, but we have to take that first step into the wilderness. The wonderful gift of grace, the wonderful gift of God's grace is that God doesn't shame us for admitting we have a problem for admitting that we might be afraid to change. So neither should we be shaming others for admitting that they need to change. Because if we are willing to repent, to admit that we are fearful, that we are resistant to change, we'll find that's when God begins to work on us the most and we begin to work our way and walk our way out of the wilderness. So hear the message of Christ, that call that Christ gives us, gives to us not to give in to fear, but to repent and to believe the gospel. Let us pray. God, we are reminded that the first step on the journey, that of readiness, that first step is often the hardest. God, sometimes we keep thinking we've forgotten something, that, that we aren't ready, that we need to do something else. Help us to remember in all that we do that you have called us by name to that journey of growth, that journey to hear your message, to take on your message, to share your message with the world. And remind us that when we do that, we will have all that we need, Lord, lead us and guide us in Christ's name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 399. Take my life and let it be. Hymn number 399. I invite you to stand as we are able, as, we, as you are able, as we sing hymn number 399. <laughs>
As we depart this morning, you'll notice our offering plates at each exit, so you may uh, place your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings, and also our Lenten devotions. Free, feel free uh, to pick those up. So as we prepare to leave this morning, let us receive the, the blessing and pray over these gifts. Let us pray. God, as we prepare off to offer our gifts to you, we are reminded that we have been spared from judgment by the one, your Son, our Savior, who took on our guilt and bore our judgment. May gratitude for his sacrifice move us not only to offer these gifts, but our whole being. Now send us forth in your grace, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all now and forever. Amen. Thank you.